Hello and welcome to Mastering in the Box. In this week's video we are going to continue the Mastering Loudness Simplified series by discussing headroom. Welcome back, I'm your host Smudge and in this week's video I'm going to give an overview of headroom, what it means and how it can apply to mixing and mastering. If you saw last week's video, which was the first in the series where I showed you two free loudness meter plugins, if you didn't get a chance to catch that video, then it's definitely worth a watch and I'll leave a link in the description below. But you will know that this series is going to cover the fundamentals of loudness in mastering and how you can apply them to create fantastic sounding masters at optimum levels. If you want to learn more about the fundamentals of mastering, then please be sure to subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button below and don't forget to hit the bell and select all to receive notifications of all our videos moving forward. If you're following the series, then you know how we can measure the loudness using the loudness meter. But before we get into the mastering, we need to prepare our tracks and ensure they're ready and optimized to be mastered. So how do we do this? Well, by ensuring that we have left enough headroom for the mastering processes to take place. So what is headroom and what does it mean? This is one of the most frequent questions I get asked and certainly one of the most important. The amount of headroom that a mastering engineer has to work with will determine some of the actions we can take to develop the song. So what do we mean by leaving headroom? Well, in simple terms, when we talk about headroom, we are generally referring to the difference in decibels between the highest level, or the peak level, of the song and 0 dBFS, which is 0 decibels relative to full scale. This is also the point at which digital audio starts to clip and is often referred to as the digital ceiling. So to show you what I mean, let's take a look at a master channel meter from a digital audio workstation before discussing this concept further. My DAW of choice is Studio One Professional, but the same will apply to any DAW. So here we are inside of Studio One, and the song that I'm going to feature today is a song called Deeper Love by the artist Popos. For anyone interested, Popos is me. Um, so this is the artistic name I use for all of my music releases, and this particular song I wrote and performed the guitars, bass and keys, uh, I sung the vocals on the original track and programmed the drums. For this particular example, I'm just using the instrumental, so I won't um, make you suffer with the sound of my wailing tones. But uh, what I want you to do is actually look at the master channel on the right hand side. When I press play, I want you to look at the meter, and then as we're uh, as the meter's going, I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on with the meter. So as you can see, there's two main parts or two main functions of this meter. You have the blue columns which are the peak level or the peak level meters and you have the two white lines on the two blue columns which is the RMS level which is the average perceived loudness. So what this actually tells us, if you look at the, uh, the top of the meter there you'll see this blue writing and it's, it's showing somewhere between so around about six and a half or say between six minus six and minus seven dBFS. So that's the amount of headroom that we have in this particular track. With the RMS, the average perceived loudness being somewhere around about minus 16, minus 17. What I want to do now is just show you the same track but with the volume boosted. So this is post-mix, pre-master. I'm gonna show you the difference. Here in the second example, we have the same song with the volume boosted. Remember, this is pre-master post mix so this is before the mastering and just want you to look at the master channel on the right hand side again and I'll show you what's different in this particular example so as you can see the white lines on the actual columns themselves the volumes increased so the RMS level is now around about the minus 7 minus 8 dB mark uh, which is of course is quite a considerable increase than it was before but you'll notice that the peak level actually clipping so it's going above zero dbfs so it's going above the digital ceiling what this meter tells me is that it's around about about one and a half to two dbs above the digital ceiling and it is clipping so the, we are actually now in a situation where we are having undesirable digital clipping which will affect the music 
When we talk about audio on peak levels, it's also important to understand some of the basic concepts of sound and why these are important. If a sound has a peak, which is the loudest part, then logic dictates that it must have a trough, or quietest or low part, but then also a middle or average loudness. This is where we start to understand the concept of dynamics. Dynamic range is a concept often talked about, but in simple terms, the dynamic range is the difference between the quietest and loudest parts of a piece of music. This is quite an in-depth topic which I'll go into in greater detail in a future video, but dynamics can be great to add excitement to the listener. If you think about a song that has a quieter and louder parts, it can create excitement and keep the listener engaged. But there is a downside and a very dynamic signal could mean some of the sound sources get buried in the song at different parts. On the flip side, a song lacking dynamics could be loud, but quite flat sounding and not as interesting. Look out for more on this topic coming soon. So we've discussed the peak level and the difference between the loudest part and the quietest part being the dynamic range. But what about the middle or average and why is this important? Well, the average signal level over time of a sound is called the root mean square or more commonly known by the acronym RMS. So why is RMS important? Well, put simply, RMS is the measure of how loud we perceive a sound to be. This is where sound and time come into play. And I don't want to delve too deeply in this video, as uh, this topic is quite complex and one that deserves its own video in due course. But in essence, peak level can happen at such a speed that with human hearing, we may not perceive the loudness in our brains, whereas RMS, being the average signal level over time is measured over a longer period which can help our brains perceive loudness better. There are factors which influence this, but once again for the scope of this video we'll keep things simple. So we've discussed peak level and RMS, but what does this have to do with headroom? Well a lot of people confuse headroom as the difference between the RMS, which is the average perceived loudness, and the digital ceiling, or 0 dBFS. But headroom is in fact the measured difference between the peak level and the digital ceiling. So why does having headroom matter? When you consider that we are largely recording and mixing in the digital domain, these days we have to acknowledge that digital processing, invariably, will add volume to the overall sound. Whether that be from EQ, compression, saturation or a multitude of other processing techniques, there is a tendency to add volume along the way. Given this, we need to understand the concepts of digital clipping. OK, so digital clipping. You may have heard of clipping, but what is it? Well, we have mentioned the digital ceiling being at 0 dBFS. If a sound recorded in a digital domain goes above 0 dBFS on a metre, well, technically, digital audio cannot go past the ceiling, but the waveform becomes clips at the digital ceiling. What this means is that the top of the transient, or peak, is cut off at the digital ceiling, creating an undesirable distortion that happens when the signal or sound source cannot be processed by the electronics. If your overall mix is running too hot, or too loud, and you clip the master bus, then your mix will lose fidelity, become harsh and distorted, and generally result in a high loss of bass frequencies. Headroom therefore becomes so important as it provides a buffer between the peak level and the digital ceiling to prevent digital clipping. Consideration should also be given to the fact that in mastering, we will need to make use of some of the headroom during the mastering processes. If there is no headroom after a mix, then it becomes incredibly difficult for us to master a track as there is no room for mastering processes to take place, without the sound clipping or heavy compression being applied. So what is considered a good amount of headroom before mastering and how do I achieve it? My recommendation would be to allow between 4 dB and 6 dB of headroom for mastering. So once you have finished mixing your song, if you aim to have a peak level of between minus 4 and minus 6 dBFS, then this will be a good ballpark figure for the mastering processes. That's not to say that a song cannot be mastered if the signal is a little hotter, but the less of the headroom available, then the more restricted the mastering processes can be. So before we finish up this video, let's just discuss some good practices for leaving headroom. Don't apply heavy compression on the mix bus or master channel. Gentle compression using a bus compressor is usually fine if you want to add glue to your mix, but certainly don't use a limiter. Leave limiting for the mastering process. For those who do like to mix through a limiter, 
to reference to mix at higher volumes, then remember to remove it before bouncing the track down for mastering. Gain stage early on in your mix process to ensure that individual tracks aren't running too hot before processing. I will link a video in the description to give you an idea of how you can do this. Try and achieve a conservative level on the mix bus or master channel following your static mix to give you plenty of room for processing. A good rule of thumb would be to aim for a peak level of around minus 10 dBFS to give you plenty of wiggle room for your plugins. Well that is the video on headroom. I hope this gives you a good insight into the concept and why leaving adequate headroom for mastering is so important. As always I would love to hear your thoughts and comments so please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll certainly get back to you. If you like this video then please don't forget to subscribe using the red subscribe button below and don't forget to hit the bell and select all to receive notifications of all of our videos moving forward. I will continue the series with next week's video to be released next Tuesday, but in the interim, I hope you'll keep safe and well, and I'll see you in the next video.